Hello again, everyone. Just another update. And I also wanted to just run over a few tips and pitfalls that I've been meaning to share, but I've collectively saved them for this one video. So, yeah, as you can see, she's all back together. I've got the PS2 remote back on top. Covers all fit great. Um, there is a couple of fitment issues where they the top and bottom covers and even the front and the back, but I didn't have to adjust those at all. But the the top and the bottom covers are so close to those motors that when they're moving they do catch and nibble on that side a bit so I just curved uh, cut off the corner a little bit I think they need a little bit more because as I'm moving her through her kinematics I can sometimes hear the body panels catch so they could probably use a little more clearance there but yeah as you can see she's back walking again well not walking yet that's my goal for the weekend is to give her a good walking path. But all the kinematics features are back, which as I've explained before is kind of fake kinematics. But anyway, okay, a few things. So yeah, that's regarding the body panels. That's kind of a side note. Um, when you're in development, you'll most likely be connected to a power supply, and the added advantage to that is it shows you your amperage draw. So right now, that's not good, right? It's pulling over an amp just in standstill. Now there's two reasons for that. One is, as you're walking around and moving her legs, she'll end up stretching out a bit and, and not be in her normal home position. So those servos have a little bit of stress on them, therefore, not right now, I'm pushing over an, over an amp of current. But if I just simply lift her up gently and put her down gently, you can see now her current has dropped down to 0.3 and then up to 0.7. Okay, now the reason why it went up to 0.7 is my calibration is a little bit off. As far as her weight goes and her being level, the four legs are not on this table perfectly. So if I, you probably can't see this on video, but if I lift her up off the table and then just lower her, two diagonal legs will touch and two diagonal legs are not. And the minute I get all four, then the two that were touching first are now a little bit compressed and therefore they draw a little bit of amperage. So it can help in calibration too. When she's sitting perfect, I've had, before I took her legs apart, I had the calibration down to about 0.2 amps she would draw in, in just standstill position. So I'm a little bit off, so I'm gonna fix that. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's one thing. Next is um, startup. So as you're development, developing, once you get your home positions correct on your servos always 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 be very careful when you're turning her on or re-uploading code because she will jolt to get back to this home position so whenever I shut her off let's see if I can do this with one hand I'm just gonna turn the motors off I just let her fall straight down and sit like that okay that's how I store her or prepare her for development what have you because now when I turn the servos on, she'll just stand straight up, and there won't be a problem. Okay? You have to be careful when you're coding. I mean, if you have some erratic behavior, and, and you quickly hit stop or one of your power switches, and don't fully power her down, when you boot her back up, she's going to go back to that last position she was at first, and then go to home. So it can be very tricky, so the best way around that to ensure that you never have that problem is anytime you're going to upload code, completely shut her down, which means kill not only the power, but unplug the Arduino, make sure the Arduino goes off as well. <clears throat> um, and then to follow up with that, also, and they, talk, they say this about the real Spot Mini for damn good reason, but it applies here as well, Keep your fingers away from these four joints because if you are holding her here and you start her up and these motors are pretty strong, I don't think it would take your finger off, but it could cause a, a pretty good injury, I'm sure. I, I haven't, I got my finger stuck in like the, in here somewhere at one point, or well not stuck, but I felt the power pinched between two pieces of PLA. I can just imagine being pinched in the motor uh, mechanism, so... Be very careful <clears throat> with that, please. Okay, and then I want to put her on the stand to show you a couple of other things. But before I do that, I'd like to talk about the remote. 
So if you are going to use one of these PS2 remotes, uh, they can be very tricky to get it to sync with the robot. Um, I've no noticed you have to power this first, then power this joystick. If, if both lights flash, you're screwed, you have to start all over. And then also, um, anytime you re-upload code, you'll notice the red light will go off. I've found that if I hit the mode button, it'll reconnect and then both lights will come on again. If you don't do that, it, it won't connect. So I, I had some frustrating time with this because I wasn't aware of these little pitfalls. Oh, and then another one. If I shut this off right now and then turn it back on, both lights will flash, meaning I disconnected it. But then I can't connect at all. And then if you shut it off again, you will not be able to turn it on for five minutes. You'll get no lights, no nothing. I've even pulled the batteries out, and still, you have to wait five minutes or so, and then it'll come back on. Very peculiar. Maybe I'm misinterpreting and I'm doing something wrong, but anyhow. Okay, so... What else? Oh, yeah. And then, again, in regard to this, and you'll see notes in my code for it. If you initiate this first and the motors... For some reason, Arduino, it could be my electrical connections or wiring or something, uh, Arduino fires off every single one of these buttons on boot. So you can imagine when it's working, when all those buttons have actual commands, she can go a little haywire. So I've written code that will initiate them both, but then it kills the, the controller output to the motors. And then I'd fire through the joystick uh, controls a dozen times or 20 times or something to that effect, which takes a split second, of course. And then re-energize re the motors, and all is fine. So that worked out for me. Those little couple little PS2 tips. All right, what else? Um, yeah, let's put her on the stand so I can show you. The last thing I wanted to talk about, this is going to be tricky to do one-handed as well, but if we scoot her over like that, and then pick her up. Oh, and for those of you that are making this stand as well, uh, I already made one modification to it, if I take her off for a sec. I added this black block on there when I made her bottom squared off. So if you're not going to square her bottom off, you won't need that block. If you do square her bottom off, you will need that block. But now that I've extended her, apparently the wall thickness of my block extended just a little bit. So it's uh, a millimeter or two too long. So it doesn't quite fit as good as it used to. And so yes, as you may know from a previous video of mine, that I went ahead and split out some of the control of the components from the Mega to a secondary Nano that sits inside of here, which is serial connected and talked back and forth, and the Nano controls the RGBs, the OLED, as well as the ultrasonic sensors, all in the head. And we installed it inside this shoulder cavity right here which you can see a Nano right down there. I could say that the wiring was a little tricky, probably because I should have used much more flexible wire. You know, I got really crazy with making a pinhead connector to plug them all in at once because it is kind of tricky to wire this up with it being down there. And unfortunately, with the terminals on the board and wires plugged into them, you can't lift the board in and out from the sides or the top. So it was a little tricky to wire, but I made these pin headers here connected to the head so that if I need to, I can just yank the head off. And there's, there's another joint in those pin headers that we can't see right now. That will disconnect if I just yank it out. But there's no way I'd be able to reconnect that, so I'd have to undo the terminals again and reconnect it. So it's a little tricky, but hopefully it won't need much service. Uh, the Nano itself pops right out of the circuit board, and you can pull that in and out easy enough. And then, of course, you can reach the potentiometer and the button, too. So yeah, that came out pretty cool. So now this is pretty much the complete electronics. And it turned out to be quite a complex machine. Well, there's a couple of boards underneath as well. Three, to be exact. But anyhow, what I wanted to show you is... 
So that's at her normal speed, which is a pretty good clip. And while that's running, let's see if I can do this one-handed, the ultrasonic sensors are running. And pretty good. They barely slow down her step rate. Matter of fact, I can probably speed her up a bit too. Still work. So the tricky thing about these, the way that the angle is, um, unless I'm like 10, under 10 millimeters away, then they'll both register. The minute you move out like this, you're at an angle to both of them, so you get really bad reading. So you have to kind of move off to the side. I, the idea is obviously if you're on the same plane as that center, you're getting a good reading. So as you can see, I'm getting the right sensor. Hopefully you can see that. I'm getting a good reading on the right sensor now because I'm holding my hand right in front of it. Just that one, parallel with the face of it. So they'll be useful. I mean, you'll, it'll still see, you know, in, in this direction and in that direction. As far as it's seeing right directly in front of it, it that these sensors aren't gonna help with that much until you get within 10 millimeters. But they're useful. So there we go. That's my video for today, guys. Uh, like I said, I'm going to work the weekend over on software and really try and get her to do a, a nice, smooth walking gait, finally. Um, I'm really relying on that added length to get her back legs off the ground because that's where I have had my problems with getting her to walk. So, stay tuned, like, share, subscribe, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks for watching.